American has launched a program aimed at confronting gender-based violence. Here to tell us more about Living with Dignity initiative is Anglo-American's Head of Sustainability Engagement, Hermine Botes. Thank you so much for coming through, Hermine. So I read through your statement, and I must say I battled to find uh, the concrete details of what it is uh, that is entailed uh, in this particular program. So you've piloted it uh, at your Limpopo Platinum um, operation, but what exactly does it entail? Sure. Um, I must backtrack and say that Anglo-American has done a lot of work over the years to address this issue, especially because women weren't allowed working underground 20 years ago. So we had 2% of the workforce then were female. and that then radically changed. So you found women in an underground environment uh, that was just not designed for them. Uh, it was hostile emotionally and physically and socially to women. So this program uh, started with a series of baseline studies to really understand the nature of the problem because we'd never done that kind of thing before. To my knowledge, no other mine had either. So it was really digging into the nature of the problem and there are four tangible commitments. Number one, every single one of our mines in South Africa, and eventually globally, because this is a global problem, will have a gender-based violent, uh, violence elimination program in place, um, done in conjunction with experts. We will introduce violence and gender-based violence intervention programs at 110 schools that we already support through the SA Schools program. We will make positive parenting um, gender stereotyping um, programs available to all of our employees as well as their family members. Mm -hmm. And every one of our operations will review their social and labor plans, their CSI plans, um, and some work that we've done on health baselines in those areas to develop a safe communities program. So talk to me about the work to make the environment underground um, because you know for many people when they think mining they think underground whereas of course there's a lot more to mining including the various communities and other industries uh, downstream industries that are supported by mining but it, it, if we focus on underground operations for a moment there were a few incidents that were reported not necessarily at your minds, I can't remember the details, uh, but there were a few incidents that were reported um, of, of uh, violence, uh, sexual violence uh, in underground operations. What exactly are you doing to make that um, environment safer for women? Yeah. I think that we need to, um, to cut through the niceties of this issue. If you are a person or a company in South Africa, I can almost guarantee you that there's a problem within your operations, whether it's harassment all the way through to, to rape. We've had, um, in 2014, Binky Mosiani was raped and killed underground. It is a known incident. Uh, we did everything we could to work with the police to find the perpetrator and put him in jail, and that's where he is today still. In this last year, we've had two reports of rape underground. Uh, when that kind of thing happens, and it doesn't happen often, but once is too many times, we throw all the resources we can into finding out uh, what happened and bringing that person, um, holding them to account. Uh, so the broader things that we've done over the 20 years that women have been uh, allowed to work underground legally. The physical environments needed to change. Now, um, think about some of the practical things. Women wear one piece, or minors often wear one piece overalls. There were no toilets for women underground. So it's getting that kind of thing mm. sorted out. If you're wearing a one piece and you need to go to the toilet, any woman that's worn a jumpsuit knows you have to take the whole thing off that makes you vulnerable. The locks need to be secure. We've got buddy systems. We've got helplines. Sure. Um, and, uh, and more, and yet all of those interventions haven't yet got us to a stage where every person is safe. Right. What about the other systemic issues? For instance, you know, uh, issues that on the face of the issues don't seem to be directly linked to violence against women, but if you think about it, they are instrumental uh, in propping up the system of patriarchy. For example, the gender pay gap. Um, what are you doing as an, as, as an organization around that? Well, we, um, as a, a dualist company, both in Johannesburg and in London, uh, we report our gender pay gap, um, and there needs to be a very, and there is a very specific 
um, move to make sure that people are paid equally. But it's not just about the pay gap, it is about the power um, imbalance. Men typically are supervisors and women typically report to men. And where you have that power imbalance, there's vulnerability. So getting more women into senior leadership positions starts to address that kind of thing. Yeah. All right, Hermin, thank you so much for coming through. Hermin Bottas from uh, Anglo-American talking to me about the Living with Dignity initiative which the company has launched uh, in line with the initiatives, multiple initiatives really, uh, that are aimed at addressing issues of violence against women in our society. Let me